all right guys wes here welcome back to the channel and as you know assassin's creed is by far ubisoft's biggest ip right now and since they're attempting to make a big comeback over the next few years we're going to be seeing a lot from this franchise according to both official and inside sources there are roughly a dozen assassin's creed games in development as we speak and the next one on the release schedule is the highly anticipated assassin's creed mirage with the release date getting closer and closer a lot of details about assassin's creed mirage have popped up and the hype is very high thanks to this being the official return to classic stealth based gameplay instead of the massive open world rpg approach the last few games have taken today we're going to be going over all of the new gameplay details news leaks and updates that have just dropped from ubisoft themselves so strap in because we got a great video for you guys also i'm giving away a playstation 5 to one lucky subscriber at 130,000 subscribers so check the pinned comment for those details starting things off with the bad news according to a reddit ama hosted by ubisoft creative director stefan Bowden, they confirmed that the studio has no plans for extensive post-launch content or dlc for assassin's creed mirage Bowden then states that the studio has no plans for now and any dlc will likely be limited to cosmetics and bonus content at launch which if you didn't know some pre-orders include the bonus 40 thieves quest players can also gain access to the prince of persia inspired deluxe pack by getting the deluxe or collector's edition of the game so as unfortunate as it is that no story content dlc will be happening this is likely due to the developers focusing on the launch date of mirage which i think is a great call ubisoft is focusing heavily on the main story and gameplay mechanics of the game so the fact that they're really focused on nailing that bodes really well for the release of assassin's creed mirage which i think is a great first step in reviving the assassin's creed series now if you didn't see it recently ubisoft released a nearly six minute preview of assassin's creed mirage on their youtube channel called basim the master assassin now in the video the team goes over some details about basim and what we can expect from him in assassin's creed mirage but it also reveals a ton of new gameplay information in the process the story and characters were heavily influenced by Assassin's Creed 1, which hopefully translates well with the gameplay. It was also stated that while this game can be played without any knowledge of what happened in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, there are still going to be a ton of Easter eggs and references to that game hidden in the story in the map of AC Mirage. So those of you who are really invested in the lore of Assassin's Creed, there should be plenty of connections to find in this new game, despite it being a totally different style from the last three AC releases. During the video, we also got a better look at the skill tree in Assassin's Creed Mirage. There are three categories of skills, those being Phantom, Trickster, and and predator each skill tree has five to eight abilities to unlock the team described this system as linear and story driven and will not be xp based at all which i'm actually really excited about that was kind of the big issue with the rpg games which definitely made sense to those games because they were rpgs but the focus was less on story and more about grinding specific objectives so you could continue the story so them doing the skill trees the way that they're doing it should make the game feel a lot less grindy than the last few assassin's creed games and further emphasize stealth and completing your goals instead of hacking away at damage sponge enemies just to level up the gameplay footage used in the video actually showed three specific skill upgrades and what they do the first skill of the phantom tree is called breakfall which costs one skill point and will give basim the ability to automatically perform a roll when landing from a long jump lowering the fall damage after breakfall comes a skill called airstrike that costs two skill points and will slow down time while aiming a throwing knife mid-air which honestly sounds pretty sweet after that is the kickback skill which costs three skill points kickback will make it so after you perform a successful parry you could press y or rather triangle to strike the enemy who attacked you the footage also briefly touched on tools and how they could be upgraded and utilized through the gameplay which sounds good to me but obviously not nearly as immediately important during the campaign as the skill trees but still the decision to remove xp driven progression and allow the gameplay to play out more like the old school assassin's creed experiences makes me super excited to get my hands on it that said there are some cool tools in the game including a blow dart that can knock someone out for 30 seconds from up to 13 meters away there was also a brief piece of gameplay that showed off a timed smoke bomb that will be great for surprising enemies and getting away or even pushing forward for the killing blow now each tool can be upgraded although we won't know how much of a grind that will be until we get our hands on the final build but just because this game isn't going to be an open world rpg doesn't mean the grind won't be real except this time i think the grind will be really fun now we also got confirmation that outfit die a fan favorite feature of assassin's creed games will be returning to add some subtle customization for our character there was also some new combat Combat gameplay where the commentator said that stakes are much higher than other recent games and will rely heavily on tools to escape sticky situations when looking at the combat in motion it kind of reminds me of a from software game with the lock on camera and heavy emphasis on parrying which i am totally fine with for a game like this throughout all of the previews and gameplay we've gotten for assassin's creed mirage it's become very clear that ubisoft is deliberately trying to play to the nostalgic feeling of assassin's creed 1 2 and brotherhood i mean the series is over 15 years old at this point and i think more than 
enough time has passed for Ubisoft to start capitalizing on the memories we have from the 360 era of the franchise. Now, in a recent interview with the creative director, they opened up about the AC Mirage parkour system and how it invokes classic Assassin's Creed gameplay. They said this, and I quote, it has not been built to reproduce exactly a former system. It has been designed to reproduce a feeling, a nostalgia that we wanted to share with our players. It's built as a tribute to the first Assassin's Creed games right out of the gate. And also it was for us natural not to emulate, but inspired by those early games. Later in the interview, they said that the team was super focused on the fluidity of movement and encouraging momentum. And from the trailer and all of the gameplay that we've seen, they definitely nailed that. Overall, Mirage is going to be a massive nostalgia bait for classic Assassin's Creed fans. And I am 100% here for it. With AC Mirage's dedication to stealth-based gameplay and nostalgic storytelling, it raises a very important question. Will this be the big turning point for the Assassin's Creed franchise? For the last few years, the series has kind of divided the community with the shift to open world RPGs. And according to various reports, there are still a couple of open world Assassin's Creed games in development, including the highly anticipated Codename Red. But if AC Mirage does well, does this mean we are going to be seeing a return to stealth-based games more often? Mirage has proven to me that Ubisoft knows exactly what made Assassin's Creed popular, but they've just been choosing to withhold it from us over the last decade or so, which was a really weird choice. Granted, AC Origins and Odyssey were insane hits to me personally, and I'm sure many of you guys out there as well. With AC Mirage basically welcoming back stealth-based gameplay with a massive horn section, it seems like Ubisoft really has their finger on the pulse of the community, but how they plan to capitalize on this in the future remains to be seen. Personally, I think there's a very good chance that going forward, Assassin's Creed splits main installments back and forth between the open world RPGs and the smaller scale stealth driven experiences. We know Codename Red is going to be open world like Origins and Valhalla, but what if the game after that is a much smaller scale game? It's also possible that Ubisoft capitalizes on the nostalgia hype of Mirage by announcing a bunch of classic Assassin's Creed remakes, which if you didn't hear a few weeks back, it was leaked that Assassin's Creed Black Flag has a remake that entered development. And there's also been a ton of rumors regarding a remake of AC1 for years now. So it's entirely possible that new Assassin's Creed games could continue to focus on the massive open world experiences, but Ubisoft still holds over stealth fans with re-releases of classic games as well as smaller scale stealth-based games that are just priced at like 50 bucks. With the Assassin's Creed Infinity platform launching in the near future, I think that's actually a really good strategy for getting as many people as possible using the new Assassin's Creed hub, but we'll have to wait and see just how many AC remakes Ubisoft ends up following through with. When it comes to the expectations people have for Assassin's Creed Mirage, I think it's safe to say that the bar is set very high. Assassin's Creed was made famous by its stealth gameplay on smaller scale levels. And when Ubisoft decided to leave that behind, they lost a lot of the franchise's core audience. As many of you guys know, it's much easier for a franchise to lose people than it is to win them back. Not many franchises have managed to survive pushing their core audience away and then trying to reel them back in. But I think Mirage is proving that Ubisoft knew exactly what we wanted. That said, that means the expectations are very high for this game and it's going to be analyzed very closely by fans of the classic AC games and by fans of the new open world style. Not only are you going to try to win back old school fans, but you're also trying to convince the fans of the open world games to come try out this new smaller version. It's a tall order from both ends, and they're going to be very eager to try to criticize it if there's something wrong. But with how confident Ubisoft seems to be in this game, I'm actually expecting AC Mirage to review well and possibly live up to our lofty expectations. This seems like the perfect game to bridge the gap between the two Assassin's Creed game styles. And if it's as good as I'm expecting it to be, it's going to be an amazing turning point for the series, one that Ubisoft desperately needs right now. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for Assassin's Creed Mirage? Or are you leaning more on the skeptical side of things? Do you think this is a good idea for Assassin's Creed to go back to stealth? Or are you desperately going to miss the open world RPG approach? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. Like the video. Don't forget to enter the PS5 giveaway. The details are in the pinned comment. And until next time, this has been Wes, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.